Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. It is always a celebratory time of the year when the green teas freshly arrive from the fields over there in China. And as has been the case for the past few years, the first ones to land are our very early picking supreme grade teas, the absolute rarefied atmosphere of green teas. I have in front of me two teas that we've seen before. This is our Angie Bai Cha Supreme, also known as Jade Arrow Supreme, has become a very much sought after. People are waiting for this tea. So I'm taking the opportunity to announce that this is now out and also released for the first time last year, a pinnacle grade first pluck, Zhu Ye Qing from Sichuan. This is Bamboo Sabre. Very, very different from a lot of uh, Zhu Ye Qings out there, which tend to have too much of a sort of green, um, raw taste about it. This is much deeper and just an incredible, incredible tea. I would love to drink them both in front of you today, but I've done videos about these before, so I'm going to put them to the side and I'm going to focus my attention on this, our Long Jing Supreme. This is a West Lake Shihu Long Jing. It's been a while since we've sourced Long Jing from West Lake, so I want to talk a little bit about that, but let's quickly scope the tea and then we'll go into it in a little bit more detail. This is season the 24th of March 2022 is the harvest date on this this tea so very early it's one of the first plucks it might not be the first pluck but it will be pretty close to the first pluck it's preaching Ming so before the 4th of April 24th of March 2022 the cultivar is the Longjing 43 which is the classic cultivar which has been grown in this area now it's not the Chun Ti Jong variety uh, that tends to be grown in this area it tends to be Longjing 43 origin this is from the much revered Meijia Wu area of Shihu in Zhejiang in China. So let's quickly uh, recap on this. Longjing, aka Dragon Well green tea, uh, should be produced in Zhejiang province. If it's produced outside of Zhejiang, then it can be called like Longjing style. But really, in order for it to be a proper Longjing, it should be produced in Zhejiang province. And then you sort of split it into two. You've got Zhejiang Longjing, which is a uh, Longjing tea, which is produced anywhere in Zhejiang outside of Shihu, which is West Lake. And there are amazing Longjings being produced and for over the past few years, we've only sourced our Longjing tea from um, areas outside of Westlake and I'll get onto the reason why in a little bit. And then there is uh, the other category, which is Shihu Longjing, Westlake Longjing, and that can be further subdivided into five different uh, places, uh, lion, dragon, cloud, tiger, plum. So uh, Meijia Wu uh, is one of the revered villages. Uh, Shefeng is another one that you probably hear quite a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, tea sellers um, claim that their tea comes from Shefeng. Uh, it's, it's one of those ones that everyone likes to put as a tag in front of their, in front of their tea. Uh, I will say very, very quickly, not to question your authenticity of, of you know, specific sellers out there, of course, but Shefeng Longjing, it's impossible that everyone gets their tea from Shefeng uh, and the price point will give you a very big clue as to whether or not uh, it is from Shefeng. So this is from Meijia Wu, another very revered uh, area of Shihu and again gets the stamp of authenticity to say this is a Shihu Longjing. Um, before we talk about that more, let's keep going with the scope. So picking is going to be a bud and one leaf. Uh, or bud and two leaves if it's very, very delicate. Elevation is about 140 meters. So not high elevation, it's never high elevation around that area. So let's just dive a little bit more as to why we've not purchased a Shihu Longjing before and why I purchased this one. So Shihu Longjing is very, very expensive. So let's just talk about the elephant in the room. The price of this tea is much higher than our Longjing tea, we, we call it Imperial Green. So this is why we're calling this one Longjing Supreme. The Imperial Green 2022 it has still not arrived. It's going to be coming in. And maybe later on, I'll do a, a taste test between the two so we can dive into this a little bit more. Um, and the price increase that Shihu brings um, is related to a few things. It's related to the classic terroir for this type of tea. So it's the, the sort of heirloom terroir for this tea. Um, the reputation of Shihu means that the uh, producers and the people that they hire in to do all of the 
um, help in terms of production, picking and production of the tea. Um, the reputation of the area means that they are going to take a little bit more time um, and you know, really try to make sure that they get the most highly skilled workers so that they can protect the reputation of Shihu Westlake uh, Longjing. So those two reasons mean that the cost is going to go up. But of course, there is also the cost increase, which is simply on the basis of name. And over recent years, we have, when we've done taste tests between Shihu Longjing and Zhejiang Long, Longjing, so Longjing produced in other incredible areas of Zhejiang, we have found that the quality difference does not justify the price difference. The price difference is so astronomically different, and it is certainly the case that you are paying for the name and, and for the fact that it is a very sought after tea because of its name, because everyone wants the stamp of sort of Shihu authenticity. And I'll also say that if you purchase Shihu Longjing um, in small packs, you'll usually see like a little barcode so you can sort of establish the authenticity. Obviously, we're buying it in larger quantities, so we don't get those packs with the barcodes on it. But this is from Meijia Wu, as I said, a very, very highly revered area in Shihu area. Um, so that's why we haven't purchased uh, Shihu Longjing for a while. We used to purchase it before. The prices just kept going up, 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 up. And then we sourced tea from other areas that we think is immaculate quality and a much better price point. But we always taste it every year, of course. And I did taste a lot of Shihu Longjing. And as always, we sort of went, yep, it's great tea, but it's not worth the price. And then I tasted this one. Which, let me, let's face it, I mean, you've seen, you, you probably see some non pareil like the super high quality Shihu Longjings, which look very, very uniform, very, very um, flat, plump leaves. They look incredible, but oftentimes, for my taste, they are produced a lot for looks. They have, they're great teas, of course they're great teas, but I find them a little bit flat, a little bit over light. Um, or just they don't brew a tea which captures something special. But when I tasted this tea, and I think it's a, a pretty tea, but it's certainly not like those sort of very pristine teas that you see out there. But when I tasted this tea, there was a dynamic quality to this tea that was very ephemeral, very hard to put my finger on. In fact, impossible to define, but in, also impossible to ignore. Also, it just undeniable. It has a certain quality to it, a dynamic quality that meant that I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So I'd sort of put it to the side thinking, yeah, it's very expensive um, tea. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I kept sort of the small sample that I had, I kept tasting it. And in the end, I thought, no, look, if I'm, if I'm that drawn to the tea, then I have to purchase a small amount for you all to try. So let's quickly look at the, the leaves. You can see, as I said, a pretty looking tea, not one of those non pareil, you know, where they've sort of separated out every tea that looks identical, which I actually don't think is a good sign. When I see Longjings that look that pristine, I find the flavor is one dimensional to my taste. Um, sort of uh, lime greens, light greens, yellows, a little bit sort of darker lime skin colored green, um, greens. Obviously flat, obviously has that toasted look and has a little bit of that fur still on it, designating that early spring picking. I'm gonna just put some hot water in the bottom of this. And then we're gonna put some of this tea in. In fact, I'll probably put most of it in. Yeah, go on. So I can do shorter extractions. Okay, so let's see now whether or not this dynamic quality that I was so obsessed with in the tasting has persisted in the, the batch that we've received. Obviously, this is a, a little bit of a nervous moment for me. Okay, here we go. Smell of the dry leaf. Oh, just warming up, but um, for those of you who love Longjing, you know the kind of notes that you probably want, and there'll be some variations. Some will want maybe a little bit more of a, a clear, brighter note. Some will want that nutty, roasted note. This has a beautiful balance. And Longjing 43, I think, has, as a cultivar, has got a lovely balance to it. 
it's got those roasted uh, beans, the roasted bean note in there, roasted bolotti beans, but it has something much more dessert-like. It reminds me of like a chocolate, um, chocolate biscuits, chocolate, I think they're called chocolate bourbon, chocolate bourbon biscuits. Maybe it's a, just a British thing, but it's like a cocoa, a cocoa biscuit. And um, it's also got a creamy, starchy note, which is not just the starchiness of that bean note that we were talking about, but it's more like a grain, like a whipped up congee uh, rice porridge, you know, sort of a creamy, sweet starchiness to it, but with a lot of chocolate note coming through mixed with those uh, bur bourbon biscuits. Let's give it a quick rinse. Put that to the side when I pour these away. Okay, let's have a smell now. Ooh. Um, the first little, um, uh, the first note that I pick up is the, the roasted beans, but it's more like in a stew or like a, a broth. So it's like a bean broth maybe like a feijoada, like a Brazilian feijoada. And it's got that richness that comes from a, from a, a well-made feijoada. Um, uh, but it also has, uh, interestingly, a little um, light note of coffee bean in there as well. Like, uh, yeah, like, but very light, but as if you're sort of just walking near a coffee shop where you just get a little bit of that sort of coffee smell. So, it has a sort of almost like a Latin American sort of smell to it, like feijoada, a little bit of coffee. But then it has a brightness to it as well. It has some airy quality, like an alpine freshness to it. I wouldn't say grassy, more like as if, you know, the, the air in a meadow, not cut grass. I never want cut grass smell in my longjing. Uh, sweetness like green peas like fresh green peas sweetness as well so a combination of savory uh, a little bit roasty toasty uh, a little bit of the the starchy and then you're getting the green su sweetness of green peas and meadows mm. okay let's check the water 75 so we're going to bump that up so yeah, it was a very difficult decision for me to decide whether or not to get this because I am very well aware that the price point is, um, is high on it. But that's the price point of Shihu Longjing. You, there's no getting away from it. And as I said, if you're seeing it for a very, very low price, then uh, unless they are the actual producers, the actual farmers, then it's impossible. Some of the price points that I'm seeing, especially for Shefang Longjing, are just, it's just impossible. Um, but anyway, the, the point here is that if the price point is high, then you're looking for something that is, as I said, you're looking for a quality that is very difficult to define. It's got to have something special, which is sort of like got a star quality to it. It's hard to put your finger on the reason why that was getting too hot. Um, and this had it. So I just, I couldn't pass it up. Let's quickly check the, check the temperature. Oh, too hot. And I'm not gonna mess this tea up. Let's pour some cold water in here. How are we doing? Yeah, getting there, 85 degrees. That's it, that's what I want. You could go 80 if you want, but I think that I'm gonna just push it a little bit further. All right, let's, uh, Brew this up. I'm gonna brew it for about 20 seconds. I tend to brew, well, I always brew these types of tea, Gong Fu style. I do not subscribe to the open glass or double Gong Dao Bay style, grandpa style. I mean, I'll brew grandpa style sometimes if I'm, you know, if I'm feeling like I just want an informal session that's easy. But 
when I really want to taste the tea, Gongfu is still my go-to. I know that that might be a bit controversial and go against the sort of um, the wisdom out there in China. Whenever you go to China, they'll tend to serve these in open glasses. I just, in my tests, don't think that it produces the richness of flavor that you get compared with Gongfu. Color on this is as you'd expect, beautiful, bright color, like a citrine or a chartreuse, you know, that green, yellow uh, brightness. Right, here we go. My first taste of 2022 Meijia Wu Longjing Supreme. Let's hope it has that star quality. Um, texture and actually that star quality that I'm talking about first shows itself in texture because the texture when it hits your mouth is sort of medium you wouldn't expect it to be ultra thick for, for a green tea it's like medium and soft but what is very noticeable is that it immediately opens how to describe that it it sort of almost opens and evaporates into something very vaporous and filling um, it fills the mouth with like a a, a, um, a very rising vaporous uh, flavor and taste so the texture has an immediate movement in the mouth from being this lovely soft, medium thick liquor, and then suddenly opening into something very um, uh, vaporous. And um, that just means it sort of like fills your nose, you know, fills everything with, with, with incredible aroma. Okay, let's, let's dive into taste. And I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm really happy because I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that same richness. We'll talk about the tasting. The tasting notes will probably be very similar to tasting notes you've heard with other Longjing teas. So I'm getting uh, chestnuts, roasted chestnuts. I'm getting like um, um, I'm getting those beans, malted like malted barley, so sweet, sweet grains. Um, I'm getting a little bit of those green peas. Um, some flowers and fruits. The flowers are um, magnolia. Magnolia can have a little uh, gingery zing to them amongst the sweet floral nature. The fruit. It's got a bit of lemon, um, but like sweet lemon. It's got a bit of uh, like uh, melon. Uh, what is it? Gala melons, I think. The ones that are sort of an orange color. I can't, I always get my melons mixed up. Twisted my melon man, for those of you who know that song. Um, so it's got sweet, it's got floral, it's got chestnuts, it's got um, beans, it's got malted barley. Um, it's got uh, an umami brothiness to it. What's the star quality? Well, first of all, the balance is great. It's supreme in terms of its balance. It's got all of that going on. But the, it's, um, it's like that umami brothiness is not just a taste, but just fills my mouth with this um, intense richness that leads to a juicy sweetness that is lemon drops and melons. It's 
so difficult to put my finger on, but it is incredible. And it has still got some of that creaminess as well. I talked about congee before, but now it's moving more like into um, um, a rice pudding. So sweeter. So there's definitely more sweetness in the actual liquor compared with the aroma in terms of the taste compared to the aroma. Mm. And as I said, the, the um, finish is just tingly and juicy and moving and vaporous. And it just continues to persist and persist and persist in the mouth. Another sign if you are you know, looking for those quality markers, and we've talked about it in many videos before, the quality marker of persistence and vaporousness um, for the really top, top shelf teas. Let's have a smell of the empty flute brewer after one infusion. And already I'm getting a lot of sweetness. I'm getting icing sugar. It has a, a sort of alpine freshness, but I would sort of move that into sort of talcum powder freshness, you know? Uh, it's got a powdery freshness to it. Um, and the, the sweetness is um, icing sugar, sponge cake. Yeah. Like a simple sweet sponge cake. Oh, it is such a difficult tea to describe. And maybe, as I said, I'll do another video comparing it against our 2022 uh, Imperial Green Longjing when it arrives to see if I can tease it out a little bit more. Okay, let's boost the temperature up. Gonna have one more infusion of this. Obviously you can have like five, six, seven. I would just keep drinking this, max it out. And then I would do grandpa style at the end of it because it's just gonna keep giving you so much sweetness. My mouth is like bursting with juiciness. It's like I swallow and it just gets flooded again. Again, it's these little dynamic quality markers that is very difficult to um, isolate, but all together uh, creates an experience that is different. And whilst a lot of Shihu Longjings don't give you that, when I tasted this one, I was like, this one gives it. And uh, that's why it has made it to our shelves. Ah. Oh such a specialty. When I visited Meijia Wu, I've tasted lots of teas in Meijia Wu before, and again, like them a lot, of course, but never purchased. I don't know, something, something else about this tea. And you know, that's what I love about tea is, you know, while, we, while I try and, and, and other people out there try to describe what they love about tea, sometimes it's just, you just gotta say, it's indescribable. There's a quality about the tea that you just can't sort of define and you can only sort of put signposts to, to sort of the, the, the kind of things that are exciting you, but it's, it's, it's more than that. It's encapsulating sort of lots of little details that come together to make a tea that you just will want to keep drinking. Cheers. Mm. Intensity of flavor is actually growing. Those sweet melons are coming through. Yeah, chestnuts. The Longjing 43 really, I think, works um, with this tea. You know, I'm, I'm sort of, I've le lent more and more in my older age towards the very roasty Chunti Jong varieties, the very, very sort of roasted bean note. Um, but this has, a, has a, a touch of lightness, a touch of clarity that I think is really, really, um, that really hits the spot with this. It, it creates a beautiful balance. Yeah, more of those flowering notes, more of the magnolia coming through. Mm. I'm already starting to get the the tea sweats a little bit here. This has definitely got some potency to it. Mmm. Airy. I can't describe it. I need to sit down. I'll try and write something better on the website to try and describe what it is that's so special about this tea. 
And of course, if you can describe it better, then let me know if you pick it up, what you think about it. All I know is that it has immediately risen to the top of the pile whenever I want to reach for a green tea. This is gonna be my daily drinker for the next few weeks, I'm sure. A spectacular Long Jing from Shi Hu. Let's quickly take a look at these leaves and then I'm gonna leave you and keep brewing. Yeah, lovely, beautiful pistachio green leaves. Very, very bright. You can start to see the quality of the picking as well. Lots and lots of buds and very, very young leaves. Body sensation already feeling very bright, feeling very happy and that's not just because of the fact that we've got this now in stock. That's it, T-Heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the supreme stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.